Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to uh, Burlington East Presbyterian Church's Church at Home. Uh, it's a new year. Happy New Year, everybody. I hope you got uh, an email from me if you're on our mailing list uh, at uh, midnight last night. Uh, no, night before last, I guess. Uh, welcoming everybody to the new year. So I do welcome you, and I thank you for joining us today, whether you're watching us live this morning or whether you're listening to us live on the phone lines, welcome to those of you who are participating in that, whether you're watching this maybe later today or through the week. God bless you and thank you for being with us. And this is our uh, second new year uh, doing this online. And uh, I'm going to move right into our announcements this morning because there's a couple I want to make really uh, special announcements. So our first uh, announcement that I want to point out is one I point out most of the time, and that is that I'd like to be praying for you. I really cherish the opportunity to be praying for you, and we've had lots of prayer requests over this last little while. So if you have somebody or even yourself that you'd like to be praying for, please send that along to minister at burlingtoneast.net. And there's a link in our newsletter that you can just click on that, and it opens up your email, and you can send it to me. If you like your name added to Sunday prayer time, let me know. If you just like it just between you and me and God, that's fine too. We can do that as well. So send that along as soon as you can. We're back to still continuing, rather, I guess, with virtual visits. Um, uh, you can have a visit with me or I can visit with you, however you want to phrase that, I suppose. Uh, on Zoom, on Skype, on uh, Google Duo, on GoToMeeting, uh, whatever mechanism you want to uh, use with that, uh, and uh, or on the telephone. Just send me a note, and we can set that up for one or more of you, and we can have a little time together to pray, to talk, to catch up. The men's group uh, and ladies' coffee group are, are meeting. Uh, they will be meeting um, every Monday at 10 a.m., and the ladies' group meeting Thursdays at 1, and especially now with all the precautions we're taking, uh, masking is definitely still applicable. Bring your own beverage and you can meet downstairs at the Douglas Hall and uh, you can uh, have a chance to talk with one another. This is one of the few things that we're continuing at the moment in person and if uh, numbers continue to rise we'll address that as we need to through the time. So again very cautious folks uh, about what you're doing uh, with this but they are meeting. The newsletter is coming out. It will be coming out um, once uh, every two weeks. Uh, so I sent one out uh, last Friday. There won't be one this Friday, but the Friday following. And it's important to get this newsletter, partly because it's uh, addressing our reopening and what's going on as far as COVID goes and activities around the church, but also has uh, what's coming up in the next couple of services uh, as far as readings go and maybe some devotional stuff there and some fun things to read. So if you'd like to be added to that list, send me an email, minister at Burlington East. Dot net. I'd be glad to add you to that. We're continuing with our tradition of flowers in memory. We're doing that online, and once we go back to in-person, we'll re resume that as well. Send me an email so we can set that up in memory of. Now, here's probably the biggest, most important announcement. I put this out in the Friday's newsletter. Session has decided that uh, for the safety and well-being of everyone in our congregation, that we would just have online services starting this Sunday and uh, we'll figure that out from week to week as to when we want to uh, restart in person. And I know many of you out there desiring to have the in person as, as am I, but we just want to be very, very careful with everybody's health right now. Uh, most of the people in their congregation are seniors and we just want to make sure that uh, we're taking the best care we can for you. We're going to be restarting or continuing our phone in uh, services. You can see that at the bottom of this announcement. There's a phone number there, 289-635-4052, and type in the code 3744, and you can listen to our services every Sunday at 1030 on the telephone. And I hope that uh, many of you will pass that information along to others so that they can do that. Well, that covers off, uh, I guess, uh, most of our announcements. And again, I want to thank you for your support that we had all through 2020 and 2021 as we uh, endeavored in this uh, online uh, outreach and continuation of our services, and we're continuing to do so now into 2022. Well, as we prepare now to gather in God, let's just uh, take a couple of seconds and a couple of minutes here to put aside any distractions that we may have had 
in our midst as we got here today and uh, whatever you may be carrying with you to put aside so that we can focus and center our hearts on what God has in store for us this day. Let us pause, take a moment, prepare our hearts for worship. And as we continue in that service today, we're going to get together now for our responsive call to worship. Once again, I want to thank Donna for helping us with this. And the words will be on screen and they'll be in yellow text. You can follow along with those, say them out loud along with Donna. So let's join together now as we come to worship with our responsive call to worship. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The brightness of God's light shines upon all the nations. All are welcome to the brightness of God's dawn. God gathers us from far away and carries us with radiant eyes, with rejoicing hearts. We receive the abundance God gives. We respond in praise. With our gifts, with our very selves, we worship God. And once again, we've lit the uh, Christ candle in the center of our Advent wreath during this Christmas tide. And uh, that Christ candle is the one we light throughout the year. It carries us to the next uh, time we celebrate Christmas something to keep in mind every Sunday as you see us light a white Christ candle. That's the very one from that Advent wreath. We join together now in our first hymn, and you're going to see a theme in a number of our hymns today talking about kings, and that maybe is a tip-off of what today's message might be about. Praise my God, the King of Heaven. The words will be on screen, and let's just really sing out with this one.
I hope you sang out on that one. It's a great hymn to be singing on this, our first Sunday of the new year and our Sunday that we're acknowledging Epiphany. And we're going to talk about that as well throughout today and the wonder of God. We join together now in our opening prayer, and that's an opportunity for us to give thanks for what we've had and give thanks for what we are going to have in this coming year and also a time for us to come before God in repentance. At the end of that prayer will be the Lord's Prayer, and the words will be up on screen for that, and I hope that you'll join in with us. Let's get together now and come before God in prayer. Lord, we do thank you for this wonderful day that we have, the first Sunday that we're gathering as your people. We pray that you will honor this getting together. It's virtual and it's very different, although it's becoming more the norm, it seems, sometimes. Thank you, though, Lord, that we can do this when in the past it would have been almost impossible. Lord, we come before you this morning as well to consider, especially in this Christmas time, when things can get a little bit rough. Maybe things are not so great between family members or friends. Maybe we've been a little bit short because we're tired. We always have a reason for um, not loving others as you want us to. And we pray, Lord, that you will help us to come before you and ask for forgiveness. And we do that now. We do that in confidence because of the wonder of Jesus, that mystery of God's plan seen through Jesus, through his death, his resurrection, and his ascension into heaven. Lord, we thank you that we can come before you on a regular basis. And Lord, we also pray that your Holy Spirit will help us to repent and change our ways. That's really what that's about, to go the different direction. Instead of reacting like we always do by habit, to consider what we need to be doing in this instance. And that requires us to be aware. So give us that awareness we need, Lord, and that sense of repentance. Lord, now we gather to say the prayer that Jesus taught us, the following. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Christmas Eve, we were able to celebrate and hear a wonderful piece that was put together by our choir a few years ago. And I wanted to share that again this morning because we were talking about the epiphany, that sudden realization of who Jesus is and acknowledgement. And uh, this is a great piece, and I want to thank our choir for this one they put together for Christmas Eve originally, and that we can share again on this a Sunday of Epiphany. Follow that star. There's a star in the east, and we must follow. A star in the east, and we must follow. Oh, that star, come for 
Really great piece by our, our choir, and I'm so glad we're able to uh, share that again this morning and uh, be blessed by it. So thank you, choir. Thank you, Renata. Thanks for uh, having that available for us to listen to and see one more time. It's time now for our children's story and time together. So please gather around and we'll get ready for that. And uh, looking forward to this today, our very first children's time of the new year. Good morning, and it's a brand new year, 2022. We're starting with a clean slate, and I want to wish you again, Happy New Year. You know, you may have opened all your presents, but there's one right below this video today that has a link for today's bulletin. And if you haven't got that already, you can do that after today's service. So make sure you click the link for today's bulletin. It's got a very special message in it and some good uh, devotional things and games. Well, today we're going to be talking very specifically about a very special visit that Jesus had from three people in particular. And it says in the Gospel of Matthew, the following, When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. And that's the wise men. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And again, as I said, we're talking about the wise men that came to see Jesus. We're going to see a little story about that and then come back and talk about our bulletin. This is Jesus. Booyah! Jesus is the Son of God who would grow up to do amazing things. <laughs> His parents on earth were Mary Hi. and Joseph. Hey Jesus was born in a barn because there was no room for him anywhere else in Bethlehem. Bethlehem was part of Judea, an area that was ruled by a king named Herod. King Herod was in Jerusalem when some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Excuse me. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. When Herod heard that there was another king born in Judea, he was very upset, ah. as was everyone else in Jerusalem. Yeah. Not you. So Herod called all the important priests and Jews together and asked them where this king was supposed to be born. The Jews knew that their king would eventually come and it was always told to them that the king of the Jews, the savior of the world, would be born in Bethlehem. So they told that to King Herod. Then King Herod thought of a way to trick the wise men. Aha. So he called a private meeting with them and learned from them when the king of the Jews' star first appeared. Oh, God! And then King Herod told the wise men, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. Eh, uh, okay. Hey, on your way. But secretly, Herod wanted to know where the king of the Jews was so he could get rid of him. So the wise men went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where Jesus was, and the wise men were filled with joy. Woohoo! They went into the house and saw Mary and Jesus. Hello! Oh, look! Wow! And they bowed down and worshipped Jesus. Wait! They gave him special gifts fit for the king that he was, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then God warned them in a dream to not go home through Jerusalem, where King Herod was, but God told them to go home a different way. So they did. And then an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up! The angel told Joseph to go to Egypt with Mary and Jesus because Herod was looking to kill Jesus. That very night, Joseph left for Egypt with Jesus and Mary. They stayed in Egypt until Herod was gone, and it was safe for them to go home to Israel. <laughs> when they returned, an angel warned them about the new ruler of Judea, who was Herod's son. This way. So Joseph and his family went to the region of Galilee and found their new home in the town of Nazareth. 
The gun? Yep. We'll take it. Where Jesus would grow up and eventually do all the amazing things God had planned for him to do. A pretty amazing story about the wise men and Jesus. Today's bulletin is called, Is Christmas Really Over? And that's kind of what I was talking about when I said, have you opened all your presents? After Christmas, it can be a bit of a letdown because you've done everything you think there is to do. But you know what? Just like the wise men who came later to see Jesus, we can come and participate in different things later and keep that Christmas idea going. Take a look at today's bulletin. It's got a crossword. It's got coloring pages. It's got a word search. Lots of things to do and to think about uh, what we can do to enjoy God and Jesus, even though Christmas Day might be over. Today's song is one we've done before, and I really enjoy this one, and it's Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. And it's a great way to remember to praise God even after Christmas is over. Let's sing this together, and we'll come back for our prayer time. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a great song to be singing on this the first Sunday of the new year. We can always be thanking God for all things at all times, and God really loves that. Boys and girls, let's say this prayer together, all right? Dear God, we thank you for loving us so much that you gave your son so we too can become your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I really pray that uh, this new year has great possibilities for you and for all of us, and that God will bless you and be with you always. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. We're going to join together now in our next hymn, and it's one that I had to hunt around to find, but it's very appropriate given the story that we just had with the children and what I'm going to be talking about in the message later, We Three Kings. Words will be on screen, so please, please join in and sing along.
wonderful hymn to be singing on this uh, particular Sunday as we're approaching Epiphany. Uh, I guess it's on Thursday this week. Let's uh, join together now and uh, prepare to hear the Word of God. And as we do prepare, let's just take a moment and ask the Holy Spirit to uh, clear our minds and hearts to hear what God has contained in Scripture for us this morning. Psalm 61, Assurance of God's Protection, to the Leader with Stringed Instruments of David. Reading from the New Revised Standard Version and reading responsively. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you. When my heart is faint, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me abide in your tent forever. Find refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Prolong the life of the King. May his years endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So I will always sing praises to your name as I pay my vows day after day. Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 7 to 14 The Joyful Return of the Exiles for thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, He who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. Spiritual Blessings in Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, 
just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ. According to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ. As a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and with, without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, man but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart who has made him known. This then is the word of God. Thanks be to God. And thank you, Donna, as well for helping. We're going to join together now in our next hymn of praise. And we've got that word king in the title again, because we're working with a bit of a theme here. And the wise men came to see the king. The kings came to see the king. And we're worshiping the king, who is Jesus. The words for this will be on screen. So please join in and sing, O Worship the King. Thank you. 
I said it at the top of the service, and I said it during the children's time, and I want to say it one more time. Happy New Year as we enter 2022, a time when, well, things look very exciting because they're in a new year. Things may be dragging on as we're back again into a COVID lockdown. And uh, we're hoping that that'll just kind of resolve itself this year and we can get things back to normal and restart our in-person services as well. 2022 promises to hold all sorts of things. But as we think about the future, there's a mystery about the future, the mystery that 2022 currently contains. And 2021's mystery has been revealed to all of us. You know, we're about midway through the 12 days of Christmas. Someone wished me a belated Merry Christmas the other day, and I was reminded, mostly to myself, I guess, that there are 12 days in the Christmas season. And those 12 days, of course, we all know, based on that famous song, the 12 days of Christmas, and now the true love gave all these different gifts, a different set of gifts, each of the 12 days through Christmas. Why are there 12 days? Maybe somewhere around the 7th or 8th century, it was decided that there'd be a period of time during the Christmas season to wait for Jesus' birth and then to celebrate the, the coming of the wise men who visited Jesus. And we heard about that in our children's time today. And I elected not to read specifically from the Matthew account for today's reading, but to read from John. And it's because there's a great mystery that's discussed in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, and in a few other places, key places in Scripture. What is that mystery? Well, it's the mystery of Jesus. And that mystery of Jesus is acknowledged in the epiphany or the arrival of the non-Jewish people. That's the idea, the world acknowledged outside of Jesus' own people, the world acknowledged the presence of this mighty king that was born. It's a mystery that's involved, and it's a mystery that we want to look at today. Today is January the 2nd, and it's the first Sunday of our new year, as we've mentioned a couple of times, I think, already. And the 12th day, or I guess technically the 13th day, the day after the 12th day, is the 6th of January, and that's the day that we acknowledge in church, the church calendar, the Epiphany. The Epiphany is celebrated mostly, I guess, in Catholic and Anglican churches. It's acknowledged in Protestant churches, and we're acknowledging it certainly today. But I guess the question is, what does Epiphany really mean? Well, it's certainly about the wise men coming to visit Jesus, coming to see him, and that they were outside of the realm of Jesus's people, the Jewish people. And so this is when the world acknowledges that Jesus is king and Jesus is the son of God. But the word epiphany itself really means, by dictionary definition, a moment of sudden revelation, sudden profound understanding of something. And that really is what we're embracing as we talk about the wise men seeing Jesus. There's this sudden realization for us and them that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, I want to talk about our psalm reading today, which is a little bit of a, a digression away from what we've just been talking about with this mystery and the epiphany. And the reason I want to do that is it might help us connect some dots here about this idea of a mystery. Today we read from Psalm 61, and it falls in a category of psalms, and there are many psalms in this category called Psalms of Lament. Another title we could put on Psalms of Lament is, How Long, O Lord? Well, Psalm 61 addresses this very specifically, and Psalms of Lament really could be very much used today when we're thinking about COVID. We've had to shut down our church yet again, and we could be very much thinking, how long, oh Lord? It's already been two years. We're on going almost into year three with this. How long, oh Lord, before we can meet again as your people? How long, oh Lord, before we can see our family and friends kind of in a normal situation? David expresses these feelings in Psalm 61 and in many other Psalms. Now, Psalms of Lament have a very formal structure to them as we look at them all in t over time. Psalm 61 is no exception to that rule. Psalms of Lament start out with a complaint before God. Here's my situation, God, and where are you in this? 
And David does this very much so in the opening verses of Psalm 61, which reads, Hear my cry, O Lord, O God, listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. David's cry of, How long, O Lord, is I guess phrased in this way, as we see it in Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. David's very tired and very much feeling alone and apart from God. And we can sometimes feel that way ourselves. But Psalms of Lament don't just end with a complaint and an act of desperation in words. They do something very specific at the end. And Psalm 61 is absolutely no exception to that rule. It ends with the following. So I will always sing praises to your name as I pay my vows day after day. David is reminding himself and in turn by writing this down, helping us to learn the same lesson and remind ourselves to thank God for all the things that God has done for us in the past, reminding us that God will continue to work now and in the future. And by doing one specific thing, giving thanks. So I will always sing praises to your name. David is going to remind himself by singing these praises to God about the things that God has done. It's a reminder of God's greatness in the past and an encouragement that God will continue to work in the future. We can think back over the last couple of weeks when Mary had her song that she sang, which was much a song of reminder, a reminder of all the great things that God had done and all the great things that God was going to do. A good rule for us to unlock the mysteries of our faith. As we consider this mystery of Jesus, we need to be thinking about uh, other things that we have that make up our faith that truly are a mystery as well. And one of the things that comes to mind for me in particular is this idea of the mystery of prayer. You know, when we stop for a moment and think about it, what is prayer? What is it all about? There's a mystery associated with the act of praying, of talking to God, of trying to listen for God's voice and God's hand, watch for God's hand at work in our lives. There's a mystery associated with prayer. Prayer works. Prayer makes a difference in people's lives. We know that. But there's a mystery associated with it. What is it all about? How does it work? Scriptures tell us to pray, but they never really explain all the mystery of it. And I think that's probably a good thing, because mystery can be something that can spark us on and help us to acknowledge and understand and be a part of the wonder of God. So when I say the word mystery, what do I mean exactly? Well, we can see what the dictionary has to say about it. Secrecy or obscurity, a person or thing whose identity or nature is unknown. We can see that fitting very well in the visit of the wise men. Nobody knew who Jesus was, but they came and acknowledged him. The practice of skills or lore peculiar to a particular trade or activity and regarded as baffling to those without specialized knowledge. God's hand at work, prayer, faith. What all these things are? Well, they're a mystery. And really, it's like saying it's a secret. And there's a secret in God's hand at work, revealed to us in things like Psalms of Lament, and certainly revealed to us in the life of Jesus. We see this very much talked about, in particular, in this reading from the Gospel of John that we read today. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Now that can be very confusing and a mystery in and of itself, trying to get through that particular text. But it's talking about or trying to describe, as John has written this, the mystery of God's hand at work, the secret of what is going on in God's hand here in our lives then and today. And we can even see this word mystery used as we look through various scripture readings. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us 
the mystery of his will. And that's from Ephesians 1. An interesting idea here that there's this mystery. And if we want to put that other word in, maybe secret, with all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the secret of his will. It's an interesting concept for us to think about this mystery, this secret, this wonder of God. Another scripture that we can read that talks about mystery, without any doubt, the mystery of our religion is great. He was revealed in flesh, vindicated in spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among Gentiles, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory. That's in 1 Timothy. Again, we can replace that word mystery almost with secret if we wanted to. Without any doubt, the secret of our religion is great. It's, it's a secret and it's a mystery and it's baffling as we read in Timothy. Most people don't understand it. Most people who are outside of our faith really don't get it, do they? But we do. And we can accept it as a mystery, something that God reveals to us. God reveals this through the person of Jesus. In 1 Corinthians, we have this summarized in this slide. The Jews ask for a sign and the Greeks seek for wisdom. This kind of summarizes, as Paul is writing down, the mystery of God and how these people are baffled. And everybody else, the gospel is foolishness. The mystery of Jesus doesn't make any sense, as Paul puts it, because Jews are looking for a particular sign. And if that particular sign isn't met, it mustn't be of God. The Greeks are looking for wisdom and, as they might put it, insight. And this whole plan of God through Jesus doesn't make any sense. It's literally foolishness to them. What is this mystery of God? Well, it's the mystery that we find found rather in Jesus. The mystery of Jesus baffles those on the outside of our faith and at times can even seem baffling to us. But we need to trust God just as Psalm 61 is telling us to do and have complete faith in what God's plan is. So epiphany is this sudden realization of something. And it's in this particular instance, the sudden realization of this mystery or secret of God's hand at work. And it's a secret revealed. The wise men arrived to see Jesus. And when they did, the mystery or secret of God's plan was revealed to the world. And it's revealed to us. The problem with secrets being revealed at times is that it kind of takes away the wonder. The wonder of it, I guess, the best way to put it. We get used to things happening routinely. We forget that there's a secret here. There's a mystery here. There's something wonderful here. God's wonder sometimes gets lost. I want us in this new year to try to re-embrace the wonder of God's presence in our lives, despite all of the bad circumstances. You know, Psalms of Lament, like Psalm 61, are kind of T telling us that in so many ways that we need to understand that despite things not looking like God is working, God is here. We need to remind ourselves as the Psalm of Lament ends with rem remembering what God has done, singing God's praise, that the wonder of God's hand is here. There's a song that I wanted to share with you today, just the brief part of it, and it's done by Paul Stuckey of Peter, Paul and Mary fame, and it talks about the wonder of it all. Let's listen to that and we'll come back and talk for a moment. The wounded warrior turned his head on the ground where he had fallen To feel the cold dirt on his cheek and to hear a young girl call it My God, he cried, I cannot see The girl ran from the forest Better it would have been to die than to live a life in darkness and the tears that the young girl cried over her fallen lover They cleansed his eyes that they might heal And so he did recover This the way God works his miracles A blinded soldier giving back his sight Now 
a scientist may tell you how night turns into day, but he can never take the wonder away. Never take the wonder away. I really like that song. It talks about the miracles of God. Sometimes we overlook the wonder associated with God's hand at work. Maybe that's what Psalms of Lament are helping us to do, especially at the end, to think about the greatness of God's hand in our lives, the power of prayer, the depth of our faith, and the wonder associated with all of these. Maybe that's what I'm thinking about when I think about mystery and secret and epiphany, that sudden realization. When's the last time one of us sat down maybe and watched the sun set or rise and thought about how wonderful and majestic that is, the wonder of God's work in our lives. Sometimes we just take it for granted. And we need to stop and consider how wonderful it is to have these things happening in our lives. And maybe that's what the epiphany is all about. The wonder of it all, the birth of Jesus, God's plan in action, God's plan, that secret, that mystery, being revealed and started. This year, please, let's just consider this and try to re-embrace this wonderful act of God and embrace our faith in a different way and maybe re-encounter the wonder of it all, the wonder of Jesus. Now, as we respond in our faith, we'll take a moment to offer thanks for all the offerings that have been presented in this week. God of mystery, God of wonder, we thank you for the offerings that have been presented through this week. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless this congregation in this coming year so that we can truly continue the ministry that you've called us to, to present your mystery and your wonder to the community in which we live. Bless all who have given. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now is the time when we pray for others, and we've been doing this online now for, I guess, coming up two years very soon. So you know how we do this, and for those of you that may not, I'll give you an opportunity to say someone's name, and it's important that you do, wherever you may be, whether you're on the phone, whether you're watching this live, even if you're watching this as a recording, take the time to be praying right now and say that person's name. Every one of us has someone that needs God's intervention. It may be yourself, it may be a friend, it may be a family member. Take the time and I'll give you that opportunity. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this chance to come together and pray for others. And on my short list today, I'm thinking of these names, Lord. Lorna Metzger, Liz McFadden, Carolyn Coppolar, Stephanie, Matt and Mark, Jean Sims, Art Ford, Audrey Ray, Lorna Jack, Athena and family, and a prayer request that came in just at the last minute here for a little boy, a little baby, toddler, Mateo, who's very, very ill. Lord, we think of these names now and hold them up to you. And now, Lord, hear the names that those who are participating in today's service have as well. Folks, say that name now. Thank you for this act of faith that's been done right now, Lord. All those names that have been offered and all the families and all the friends that are involved. Intervene and meet the need beyond just a name that's been uttered. You know exactly what's going on in that life. We offer it in Jesus' name. Amen. And now as we prepare to go forth in God, 
We'll join together in our closing hymn, and I just couldn't be talking about the wonder of God and the wonder of it all without singing that old gospel hymn. It may not be as familiar to some of you in our congregation, but I know it's, it's a great old hymn and it's an easy one to learn. It's uh, the wonder of it all. We'll sing this together and come back for our prayer time and final words. Again, the wonder of it all. now as we prepare to leave this virtual gathering and head out into the world, let us carry with us the wonder of God's love for all of us. And now may the, bless, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may God give you his peace in your going out and in your coming in, in your lying down and your rising up, in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears until we all come to stand before Jesus in the wonder of that day in which there is no sunset and no dawning. Amen.
that draws to a conclusion this uh, service on January the 2nd, the very first Sunday service of the new year of 2022. I'm Reverend Bruce McCanch, and I really do want to thank you for joining us here at Burlington East uh, Presbyterian Church's Church at Home, and we hope to see you next week and that God will go with you, and that this coming week and coming year, we can all relearn and re-experience the wonder of God's love in our lives. God bless you, and we'll see you next Sunday. Amen. Have you missed getting together with other folks from our church family? Well, we are meeting at the church building every week for fellowship, coffee, and conversation. Men's Coffee Group, Monday mornings at 10 a.m. And the Ladies' Coffee Group, Thursday afternoons at 1 p.m. Seating will be provided, but bring your own beverage, please. Social distancing and continued use of masks is still applicable. That's the Men's Coffee Group, Monday mornings at 10 a.m. and the Ladies Coffee Group, Thursday afternoons at 1 p.m. See you next week. Is there a way you could stay better informed about reopening plans and news at Burlington East Presbyterian Church? There sure is. Until we fully restart our in-person services, we've got a newsletter being sent out every Friday by Rev. Bruce McCanch. Our e-newsletter is called From the Desk of Rev. Bruce McCanch, Burlington East Presbyterian Church. And you can get your very own copy. You can get your own copy by sending an email to minister at burlingtoneast.net. It'll be delivered to your inbox every Friday. It's the best way to be in the know at BEPC. That's minister at burlingtoneast.net. Send your request in today.